This is the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Date Chest, reference number 6824S. A beautiful watch purchased in 1974 and passed down to me. Unfortunately, I feel its diameter at just over 30 millimeters is a bit too small for my wrist. Otherwise, it would suit my needs. Stay tuned as I look at other Rolex watches to see if they meet my criteria for a mid-tier luxury watch. Welcome back to Adventures with Time, and welcome to another episode in my search for a mid-tier luxury watch. In my quest so far, I've considered Omega and Grand Seiko, came very close to purchasing on that one, Breitling, Bauman Mercier, Nomos, Tag Heuer. At IWC, I found a beautiful moon phase watch I liked but it had just one problem. I saw Tudor, Cartier, Jaeger and Lacoutre, and even a Glashute original, but totally out of my price range. I'll leave a link up here to the playlist for those videos. Although there are lots of other brands I could consider, the obvious one absent from this list is Rolex, and I can't make a final decision without considering this iconic brand. A particular interest to me is their steel sports models, the Submariner and especially the Explorer 2, which I feel might be a good mix between sport and a dress watch. As I went about my search through all those other brands, I've been visiting not only watch stores that carry pre-owned Rolex watches, but also the Rolex ADs in my area. Let's take a look at what I found and considered. I didn't limit myself to just the sports watches. I tried on a few different models of the Oyster Perpetual, both the 36 and 39 sizes in blue and black dials. These are the modern larger sizes of the model I already have in my collection. Exceptional watches with very clean and sharp designs. My favorite was the black dial 39 millimeter Reference number 114300 with a list price of $5,700. Now, the only new sports model I could find was this gold Submariner. Obviously, not in consideration, but something I had to try on just for the feel of it. I really don't know how I'd feel wearing such a precious metal watch like this. Oh, well, something I really don't have to worry about at this time. I did find some pre-owned watches and another precious metal Submariner. This one, a steel and gold configuration. I did see a couple of GMT Masters with the Pepsi bezel, a 1973 model on an Oyster bracelet for about $15,000 and a 1984 on a Jubilee bracelet for $17,500. Very nice watches but out of my price range for consideration at this time. I saw a 1996 Daytona with a white dial. This model used the Zenith movement. I'm told it's the last year that they used that movement in the Daytona. Alas, the Daytona was also out of my price range, and I didn't really like the white dial on that model. Lastly, I considered the Explorer II but was only able to find the older five-digit reference, 16570. I tried on three different watches in both white and black dials. I must say the white dial really lives up to the buildup it gets from other collectors. Although I find the black dial to be more subdued and suited for a dress situation, it can be hard to read the time with those hands that just have a bit of white paint on them. The white dial has far greater readability 
and provides a level of sport and vibrance that I think would be fun to wear. My only hesitation is that I want to try on the newer six-digit reference 216570 to see if I prefer this slightly larger watch any better. If I did, I'd be able to buy a brand new watch and have the pleasure of putting my own scratches on it. However, as far as I search, I can't find one anywhere, even just to try on. An alternative is to go with the Grand Seiko SBGN005, a watch with a very similar style that uses a quartz movement and is much lower in price. But I'll keep looking for a new Explorer 2 before I make any decision on that Grand Seiko. I've seen a lot of watches on this journey and found a lot that I like. And I feel I'm getting ready to make a selection for my first mid-tier luxury watch. If you don't want to miss out on seeing what I select, make sure you subscribe and ring that bell icon so you'll be notified immediately when I publish that episode. Until then, keep those comments coming and thanks for staying with me. And don't forget to like this video. It really helps me out a lot. Until the next time.